I'm gearing up for a backpacking trip. I don't know if any of you do this, but I make up my mind about what I'm gonna do, and then I change my mind, and I waffle on it, and I read trip reports. I hear about bugs that the lake is going to. I think about how steep things are for the dogs. I decide to do just a hike, then I change my mind again, and I'm getting a late start. Yes, now that I have my adventure van all built up, I am leaving it behind to go backpacking. I've been wanting to go backpacking for a long time. I'd 100% decided on it for this weekend. And then, like I said, I was just kind of flip-flopping around and then I uh, didn't pack until this morning when I finally made up my mind. So I'm getting a very late start. It's 9.30 and I picked a longer away destination. I'm going to the Olympic Peninsula again. And um, so I've got the ferry ride and a wait probably because I've, I'm leaving late like everyone else does instead of early like I like. But um, I'll get there when I get there. It's a short hike. Um, but it should be re really interesting historically, and also I read that wildflowers are popping there. Well, there's the line for the ferry. I haven't even got into the holding place yet. Of all my times riding the ferry, I've never seen a wedding on one before. Across the Hood Canal Bridge. Looks like a lot of people are out today. Ugh. I like that right by my face. I think a bee just flew into our car. Well, that was a long, long ways on a bumpy dirt road. Poor Frodo threw up in the car, and he, he, doesn't, he doesn't mind car rides. It's Luna that doesn't like them. And I don't have a spot in the parking lot. I'm up this road, but that's all right. We're finally here. This is officially the latest I've ever started a hike. Today we're hiking the Tubal Cane Mine Trail on the Olympic Peninsula. We are in National Forest here. It's about 2.30 in the afternoon, but I only have about three and a half miles to go before I get to the area where I'm hoping to set up camp. And I should still have plenty of light because I'm going to do a couple side quests when I get there. job. Single file. Good job, guys. It was really fascinating to me to find a lot of mycotrophic wildflowers along the trail. These are plants that don't use chlorophyll for energy. I think these first ones are pine saps. And then this next one is a candy stick or sugar stick because of the red and white striped stem. These are gorgeous. We're entering the Buckhorn Wilderness on the Olympic National Forest. Now this trail cuts all the way through to Olympic National Park property, and you can cut out on Marmot Pass as well, which I've always wanted to do. But this is just a quick overnighter. Just a nice, gentle, steady climb. Look how red I am. It's pretty warm here on this slope, but mostly in the shade, so I don't think I'm getting burnt. This is all just me being a little overheated. <sighs> it's a beautiful day. It's not too hot. It was 68 at the trailhead. It'll probably be kind of cool tonight, but I'm pretty prepared. Not worried about that. This hike 
as dry and dusty as it is today. It was one of the two wettest hikes I've ever done. I came up here with my aunt and cousins, my cousin's daughter, a couple of their dogs, and it poured the whole time. We were so drenched by the end. I was just like shivering uncontrollably. We could wring our coats out, it was crazy. I think these teeny tiny little flowers are called twin flower. So we're following the side of a river canyon here. It's pretty steep, covered with rhododendron. Not a lot of views, but um, it's not a sheer drop either. So that's nice. We're about two miles in here. We are crossing a tiny creek. Such a pretty sound. I'm going to fill up my water filter here because I'm not to the mine yet and I don't really want to fill up around the mine. I know I can go upstream from the mine, but this looks like pretty good water, so I'm just going to fill up and have some extra. We've come out on an open hill, little rock slide area, and look at that. It's beautiful up there on the surrounding peaks. There's some wild strawberry. Bunchberry dogwoods. We have maybe a mile to go before we can start looking for a campsite. It's kind of gloomy in this woods. The clouds have moved over. Bigger trees in here and uh, big boulders and stuff too. The landscape's changing. I think we're about half mile from where we're gonna camp. Just past the line. And I can't remember if you can see it from the trail. I think not. Well, there's a mine right there, but that's not the big one. Okay, we are at 3.26 and here's the sign to Toll Canyon. And I wanted to set up my camp and then go up that way. There's some kind of coral mushroom. This goes through a tunnel. Just a little tunnel beside the trail. And then it goes through another one. Must have run their water through this pipe when they were up here mining. How pretty. opened up a bit. Well, the trail is just right there and I followed this social trail and found a campsite. And it is 4.15. I might go just a little further and then if I don't see anything, come back to this. Here's a really cool stream crossing and a lot of dusty stuff in the stream. Probably not the best place for you guys to get a drink. Bugs. Let's go over here and see if there's any camping on here. There's a whole bunch of people back there. And if I can't find a spot, then we will go um, back to that first one we found. Well, I think we found our spot. We crossed the creek. So we're a little ways away from the other campers. The trail to Buckhorn Lake is up behind us here in the woods. And there's a, the trail crosses right over here. 
So we'll probably see hikers and stuff, but they won't be going right through our camp. Looks pretty flat and there's some good surfaces to sit on and relax. We'll set up our tent and then see what we feel like. Well, I have fed the dogs and I think in case it gets yucky tomorrow, I'm gonna go ahead and try to find that, um, a plane crash site. I'll tell you more about it when we get there and we'll see the mine on the way. Well, it's only 5.30, but the woods are even more gloomy now because the hill next to us has covered the sun. There's the last of it, but we're gonna head up, 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 which is one of the reasons I wanted to do this without my pack on. I think it's gonna be like 450 feet of elevation in 0.6 miles. And I think 0.6 miles is the full destination. Otherwise we'll be pushing it as far as time because I'd like to get back to the camp before dark. I fed the dogs, but I didn't feed me and I get settled in. And I don't really like leaving my camp. All right, we are a half a mile from our camp before we even hit this trail. You can see it much easier on the way back. And it is going to be a rooty, rough, straight up kind of boot track here. But here we go. I think the first thing we're going to see is the mine, but it's not the mine because the mine that I've seen is much higher up on a slope and you can walk right into it. And we'll try to find that one tomorrow. This one is much smaller. Although you can walk right into it. So this was a copper mine. My flashlight is not very good. <laughs> there we go. And um, apparently it did not um, bring in any profits. And when there was an avalanche that wiped out some of the mining buildings, they went ahead and called it. Oh yeah, so this ends right here. The one I've been in before is much deeper in splits. The one I've been in before has a stream running out of it too, but this is definitely interesting. All right. Another big climb ahead. I think we're about halfway there maybe. We've made it to the top. So now we just need to look for the plane, which I assume is right around here somewhere. I didn't have exact mileage to it. Just, uh, it said 450 feet of elevation gain in 0.6 miles which we have accomplished. All right, I am 1.24 from where I've camped and I'm starting to see some of the plane wreckage here. In 1952, a B-17 was returning to McCord Air Force Base after helping with the search and rescue in Canada and there was a snowstorm, it was January, and they clipped one of these ridges and slid down a slope. There were eight men on board and three of them perished in this wreck. Wow. 
the five survivors made a shelter out of the wreckage and some parachutes and they were rescued the next day. It's really buggy up here, but otherwise this would be a great place to camp. wreckage is pretty extensive. It's really spread out over this area. Wow. This stuff is so light that they make airplanes with. If you wander around, you just see more and more. I don't know what all these parts are. Well, that was really sobering. It just, those planes, they look so huge, but they're really just made out of the lightest of stuff. And I can only imagine how terrifying it must have been and how cold <laughs> to spend that night up here in the snowstorm and to lose people that you cared about in a wreck like that. That's just horrible. But it's also very interesting now um, from a historical perspective and just a point of interest. Um, and I guess it's good that the people that went through that will never be forgotten because this is a memorial in a way as well. Well, we're back in the woods almost to our campsite and it is still gloomy, but I don't think it's any gloomier than it was when we headed up to see the plane wreck. So that's kind of nice. I'm looking forward to having a drink of water and just chilling and going to bed early. And we made it back. I'm in my pajamas, I'm comfy, but I am now very spoiled with my van and I can sleep in an actual bed and I can stand up to get dressed and I'll show you the space I'm working with now, my little one man Nemo. That's about it. The dogs are super glad we're going to bed early. They did a lot of work today. Huh. They did very good. Well, I think I'm going to have to fight the dogs for this air mattress because I've got about a third of it. Um, a lot of people wonder about solo camping. Is it scary? Especially a lot of women are scared to go out. And I was thinking about that a lot tonight. Um, as far as being afraid, I'm not really afraid, but when you start to go to sleep for the night, that's when your imagination kicks in because you're not doing anything else. And my strategy for that is to try to find a place like I have tonight with a stream. I don't want it to be super loud because if there's a big sound that I need to hear, I want to be able to hear it. But mostly what's going to be making the noise at night are going to be owls and mice, especially mice. Mice are a campground hazard, even in the backcountry. So instead of wondering what every little scrape and little click and everything else is, which is usually mice, you've got that stream kind of drowning out the smaller creatures. So, so far, when I find a place like that, it, it works. It lulls me right to sleep. Good morning. We've survived the night. Well, we made it through the night. It is, it is 5.45 in the morning. And I'm going to make some coffee, give the dog some food, have a little um, bite that I brought for myself for the morning, enjoy the stream a little more, and then I think we're just going to hike out after I pack up. That's always a process. <laughs> Luna's a good girl. You made a little nest in there to stay warm. But Frodo, he has other plans. What do you guys think about camping? Is it fun? It's pretty fun. coffee. You can't buy these anymore. Peppermint mocha latte. It's my very last one.
Well, that was fun. I think I have enough for my coffee, but I did boil part of my hand. <laughs> Oh, I did have enough. <laughs> Perfect. See the red spot on my hand? Yeah, if you are dropping something, it's great to try and catch it unless it's boiling water, and then I suggest you don't. <laughs> the high peaks are just starting to get touched with light this morning. We're in a valley here, so we won't have sunshine for a while. There's a moon in the sky too, a little half moon. I enjoyed watching a couple American dippers or water oozels trying to catch their breakfast before I packed up my campsite. I think this was the parent and the next one looked a little more scruffy, so maybe a fledgling just growing its feathers in. Preparing to pack up. The tent is a little damp on the outside, but condensation inside was not a problem at all. I didn't hear any animals last night. Well, other than picking up this plastic bag, which is somebody else's, but it's gross and I like to leave campsites cleaner than I find them if I can. Thank you little patch of ground for a somewhat good night's sleep. Last thing to pack up is that blanket that the dogs are huddled on. So miserable. <laughs> I don't know if Rhoda likes backpacking. <laughs> um, and, uh, and then we'll head out. For a one-nighter, it has been a really nice little backpacking trip, and I saw some really cool stuff. So I think that the um, bigger mine shaft is kind of up past the campsites and everybody's still sleeping. So I think we're gonna just have to make do with the smaller shaft this time. But um, all in all, I saw everything I wanted to see. So I'm just gonna hike back out to the car. I think it's about three and a half miles, four maybe from here. And if I see anything interesting, I'll show you. Otherwise, I'll meet you at the car. We are back at the vehicle, ready to head out. The entire backpacking trip there and out, plus that side trip up to see the airplane wreckage came to a total of 10.35 miles and we had an elevation gain of 1,814 feet total. Um, just hiking out there, it was just a bit over a thousand. So if you're just hiking out to kind of that mine area, then it's just a little over a thousand feet. 
when we hiked up to the airplane wreckage that added like 650 feet. So um, that one was pretty steep. Um, the dogs are dog tired and I am ready to get some coffee and go visit with my mom. It was a really nice backpacking trip and the dogs did great. I think this is a grouse that I'm looking at here beside the road. It doesn't look overly worried about me. <laughs> That's pretty funny. All right, grouse, don't run in front of me. 